This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman, with Juan Gonzalez, as we look at how the coronavirus pandemic is impacting undocumented people here in New York City, where the coronavirus has hit immigrant communities the hardest, even as the numbers of daily deaths statewide has declined in recent days. In Queens, often hailed as the most diverse borough in the world, the neighborhoods of Corona, Elmhurst, East Elmhurst, Jackson Heights have been overrun with COVID-19 cases. And even those who aren't sick are reporting fears of hunger with record high unemployment, no federal assistance for undocumented immigrants. Many are considered essential workers, continue to go to work every day without protective equipment or health insurance. Last week, hundreds of people lined up outside a church in Corona for a free bag of groceries and supplies. The line stretched 22 blocks, if it wasn't well over 1,000. This is Rosie Sotelo speaking to Univision. We can't afford rent. We can't afford food. That's why we're hoping we'll get more help for everyone. That's why we're here. Last week, California Governor Gavin Newsom announced a $125 million relief fund for undocumented immigrants in the state left jobless by the pandemic. That's California. But when asked last Thursday about similar support in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo refused to commit. When you are broke, uh, it would be irresponsible to do these things. I do hope and believe the federal government uh, should have a more inclusive policy. So All right, let's do one. Immigrants, that there's no shot well, we're looking at it, but we have real financial problems right now. Governor Cuomo is meeting with President Trump at the White House today. This comes as New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio has announced a $20 million initiative sponsored by George Soros' Open Society Foundation to send one-time payments of up to 20,000 to up to 20,000 undocumented immigrants throughout the city. Individuals will receive $400. Families will receive 1,000. As reports of widespread poverty and hunger continue in the immigrant communities, people are also organizing and helping each other through mutual aid, despite extraordinarily difficult circumstances in the epicenter of the epicenter. For more, we're joined by two guests. Juan Carlos Ruiz is a Lutheran pastor at Good Shepherd Church in Brooklyn, co-founder of the National New Sanctuary Movement and the New Sanctuary Coalition here in New York City. And Cynthia Santos Briones is a Mexican photographer, anthropologist, community organizer based here in New York City. Her recent piece in The Nation is headlined, Immigrants are Bearing the Brunt of the Coronavirus Crisis. And it's part of a weekly series called The Invisible Front Line by The Nation and the Magnum Foundation. Juan Carlos and Cynthia, thank you so much for joining us. You both are married. Uh, so thank you for joining us together on uh, one Skype. Um, as you join us from your home in Brooklyn, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Juan Carlos, why don't you start off by talking about the scope of the problem, what people are not seeing. Um, you know, the lines of people, just in Queens alone, far outnumber the protesters in different states calling for reopening uh, the states. But you don't see these images, Juan Carlos. Describe them to us. So, basically, you know, it's the despair that we see on the ground. This is a battleground. Uh, the bodies are piling up. Uh, as you know, the official number of bodies here in the city uh, that died, the people that died at home, uh, wasn't even uh, part of the official count. Uh, we have families uh, with uh, living with infected people. Uh, we have families who uh, haven't worked for over a month. And also, you have the other reality that, you know, many of our immigrant uh, families uh, they have been in the front lines. They have become the essential workers, uh, still invisible, very much invisible. But they, they've been going out to work without any protection. Uh, you know, from the federal government, there is this uh, confusion, uh, mis-messages, disinformation coming down the pipe. Uh, also, you know, uh, uh, there in New York, in the last year or so, given that we have, as immigrants, become a target, a national target by the federal government, uh, we have become uh, rather visible, but as a way of scapegoating us, as a way of 
practically, uh, you know, uh, persecuting us uh, under the uh, homeland security. You know, we have become the threat uh, uh, or the public threat for national security. Uh, so uh, the, on the ground, uh, the picture is bleak. Our families are calling, uh, not only the dead ones uh, who are piling up in their homes, but uh, they are hungry and they don't know where to turn, they don't know where to go. Um, our rapid response uh, solidarity networks in the city, you know, all the way from Washington Heights uh, in Westchester, uh, here in Sunset Park and Bay Ridge, we've been responding, uh, those rapid responses uh, teams that have been doing a lot of the monitoring of you know, the NYPD, how the NYPD locally has been uh, in in cahoots uh, working uh, with ICE, uh, you know, despite the denial of de Blasio and Cuomo, they keep, you know, they keep working. They, they've been complicit uh, with this perfect storm. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, they keep denying that the local uh, police is has been working with ICE, but the last year or so we have had many families uh, who have been persecuted, uh, raided, and uh, with the help of uh, New York police, uh, and and this has created the perfect storm because now the people, even any kind of a governmental institution, even when they need to go to the hospital, they, you know, they have this deep distrust in these institutions because we have been deceived over and over. They are doing deceptive practices, uh, you know, by our own go local government in terms of being complicit uh, with uh, federal immigration. So the, the situation is dire. Uh, many, many of our families at this point uh, not only have, do not have the means for, you know, to pay the rent, but they don't have the food uh, that is necessary for their survival. Uh, uh, so... Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring in uh, uh, Cynthia Santos Briones. Cynthia, could you talk about the mutual aid? I, I mentioned some of the mutual aid we were doing here in New Brunswick in the in the Mexican community, immigrant community here. But could you talk about what's going on in New York City with immigrant communities? And also, there's probably a bunch of more of a tradition of mutual aid uh, at the community level in many Latin American communities because they, uh, people come from countries where government support or the safety net is not as great. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing this out. Um, I think that I see a sea of solidarity, not only through the religious groups and organization, pro-immigrant organization, also through a restaurant, for example, in the Bronx, La Morada, is feeding not just immigrants, also homeless. I was speaking with one of the owners, and they were telling me, like, they are providing per day five or 400 meals and also, um, a lot of restaurants uh, are in solidarity also. And people from the community, the mutual aid is not only from organizations, it's from people, from their own immigrant communities. You know, we have in Mexico and different Latin American communities, in indigenous communities and rural communities, um, these um, uh, forms of traditional mutual aid, you know, community mutual aid that is uh, right now in the transnational territory, and that kind of form of mutual aid is here. Um, um, and, and for example, Mirna Lascano, that is an activist from Mexico, her home, her small apartment become uh, uh, the epicenter of health in Harlem. And she has provided not only food to, to her community, also she has received calls and accompanied people who have uh, their their uh, family um, sick in their own homes. So this mutual aid is coming also from the community for civilians. Um, and this is important to say, no? Of course, the organization of our leaders, uh, faith leaders are helping a lot the community, but also migrant communities are helping their neighbors, their families, uh, their compadres and their comadres um, in this crisis. 
Uh, Cynthia, if you could talk about the media coverage of undocumented communities, what's being missed, and the importance of um, the personal testimonies that you've been capturing in photos and you've been talking to people? Yeah, of course. Uh, after the government declared quarantine, I reached out through WhatsApp to some close friends from the migrant and Guatemalan communities um, to check in how were they doing during this pandemic. And as we were continuing to chat in, they were sending me photos and videos about their new life in this pandemic. And I want to say something that some of my friends have been telling me. Uh, they have been in, in front of this pandemic, but they have been always in front of any kind of disaster or pandemic. This is not the first time that the body of the migrant has been facing a crisis. They are always there for us, feeding us, working at our homes as a babysitter, as a nanny. So uh, I was uh, reaching out uh, through Magnum Foundation and the National Magazine, National Nation Magazine. So the um, we were uh, uh, talking about to do a piece, uh, and I uh, proposed to show the photos and the videos that these people that is in the front line are making as the role as a citizen journalists. They are documenting um, through their own perspective that we usually don't see in the media. Um, and at some point, this colonized, you know, the perspective. Uh, of, of journalists and show the, the migrant vision, uh, how they are feeling and seeing uh, and, and, and living this crisis. And we see through these photos, how are the conditions in their homes, you know, a small apartments and, and, you know, a family living, a one family of five members living in a one room bedroom apartment. Uh, we are looking, you know, you know, people making tortillas. Also one of the photos that wasn't published uh, in this piece, but uh, uh, one of my friends sent me, Victoria, when she was in a protest uh, outside of Bergen County Jail, and her husband was there. So um, I think that uh, it's a lot of value when we see uh, the importance uh, in how migrants are documenting this crisis. And I, I wanted to ask Juan Carlos Ruiz about the hospital situation, especially with the undocumented. Clearly, in the anti-immigrant atmosphere we've had in the country for now for years uh, against undocumented, specifically, many migrants may be afraid to go to the hospitals. But uh, and now we hear just last night President Trump saying that he's going to try to shut down all immigration into the country, even uh, legal immigration uh, for the future. This this constant. Uh, a use of scapegoating of immigrants in the country under this administration. And as you know, Juan, I mean, we are fleeing uh, these institutions from our home countries, you know, corrupt institutions, institutions that do not uh, have the welfare of our communities. So we are not new to that. But when we come to this land of the free, you know, we expect something else, but it plays out you know, differently when you have, you know, from the high escalons of power, when you have this kind of, uh, uh, these kinds of attack uh, against our community. I mean, the rhetoric, the xenophobic rhetoric, the racism that has been fed, that continues to really have uh, uh, practical consequences, negative consequences against not only, uh, you know, socially and culturally, but also economically against our people. You know, this virus has evidence, this whole infrastructure of terror, uh, uh, this misallocation of funds uh, or resources into our communities, into the most vulnerable populations of, of our society. So it basically, the virus has unmasked uh, this machinery of death, uh, you know, that feeds uh, on the blood, you know, as the Scott Stringer said, you know, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of blood in our hands. And, and basically, even if we wash our hands day and night, it's still bloody. Uh, and the government has, uh, has really uh, really caused this perfect storm by, you know, the bunch of lies, by uh, uh, continuing to attack the most vulnerable and to con and continually to uh, victimize uh, and scapegoat the immigrant 
in, in our black and brown communities. Father Juan Carlos Ruiz, want to thank you so much for being with us. And again, we cannot emphasize enough for people to understand 200 to 300 people a day, um, as uh, confirmed by the mayor himself, are dying in their homes. How many of them were afraid to go? to the hospital, afraid they could be picked up by ICE. Uh, Father Juan Carlos Ruiz, co-founder of the New Sanctuary Movement, thank you for being with us. And Cynthia Santos Briones, a Mexican photographer, anthropologist, community organizer based here in New York. We're going to link to your piece in The Nation, headlined immigrants are bearing the brunt of the coronavirus crisis and your remarkable photographs. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, who's getting bailed out? And who isn't? And then we go to Ote Mesa in California, where women, immigrants, have been pepper sprayed by guards as they deal with COVID-19. Stay with us.